गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू माई चैनल इंग्लिश लिटरेचर टूडे वील टॉक अबाउट इंटरेस्टिंग पर्सन कैप्टन जॉन स्मिथ कैप्टन जॉन स्मिथ द फर्स्ट सिग्निफिकेंट राइटर इन कॉलोनियल पीरियड यू कैन से द फर्स्ट सिग्निफिकेंट राइटर ऑफ अमेरिकन लिटरेचर एंड ही वॉज द फाउंडर ऑफ जेम्स टाउन कॉलोनी वर्जीनिया James Town the name is after King James the 1st who came in the English throne after Queen Elizabeth now captain john smith this person is captain john smith you can see and captain john smith life is as adventurous as the waves of atlantic now american literature was naturally the colonial literature enriched by the englishmen who settled and wrote about their experience so we have discussed it earlier that by american literature we don't mean the native literature or that oral tradition by american literature we mean the colonial literature the, the literature that the settlers brought with them and uh, create uh, that the literature that settlers created while they were in the 13 colonies so american literature was naturally the colonial literature and captain john smith was uh, the first significant settler in 1607 now he was not only a prolific writer but also a cartographer through his pamphlets he chronicles the kaleidoscopic representation of the colonial era from 1607 John Smith was a great seller. What happened in 1607? We have discussed in the uh, early settlement video where um, they settled and how they had to face the adversities of the new land. We have discussed already. Now today our focus is in Captain John Smith and his writings. Captain John Smith was a great seller and adventurer and the hero of James Town Colony. the first permanent settle english settlement in north america he was born in willoughby lincolnshire in 1579 or 1580 okay he was a man of elizabethan spirit and ingenuity his life will prove that from his childhood he was a boy with an extraordinary thirst for adventure and this extraordinary thirst for adventure goes on hunting him throughout his life till his death and expeditions he traveled in many countries for to the turks remain captive as a prisoner enslaved by the tartars escaped into russia and on to africa finally he returned to england and joined the mission of the virginia company what was the mission of virginia company to sail in search of a new land new country new trade market now in 1606 virginia company sent out its first colonist smith sailed with them along with robert tindall so robert tindall is a very significant name who accompanied smith he became the president of the james town colony and labored strenuously for its preservation so john smith became the president of the james town colony here you can find this is james town colony and jo captain john smith founded this so he is regarded as a founder of james town colony now after his arrival he started exploring the country like tindal and from 1607 to 1609 he conducted several reconnaissance missions in the chips peak bay sorry chisa peak bay he made contact with the local tribes the company had the financial ambition to profit from discovering gold and precious stones in the new land so that was their dream that was their ambition that in the garden of eden they will dig and find gold and precious stones and they will be rich and richer and richest so that was their dream but dreams uh, that's not but dream does not always come true comes to and so it also uh, happened in this country 
so with a high blown imagination wrapped with the romantic bubbles of honor and glory they fill their cell with enthusiastic air and michael drayton you have heard the name michael drayton in elizabethan literature and elizabethan poet who wrote verses dedicating to the virginia boys i just quote this uh, poem here because then you will understand that how much dream they infused in their mission and how that devastated every balloon is made for breaking oh i am so pessimistic now and cheerfully at sea success you will entice to get the pearl and gold and hours to hold virginia arts only paradise so they are in search of gold and um, precious jewels precious everything you can say they are actually in search of that but it was not so easy remaining alive in a new country new land new atmosphere new weather was very hard and it was so hard than to dig gold and precious stones for smith survival was the priority not the profit okay and while searching for the source of the chikahormini river he was taken captive by the some powhatan's man this is very interesting story i uh, heard a audio story on pocahontas before i read started reading american literature many month ago i read is audio student pocahontas and then when i started reading smith's life story and find oh my god that pocahontas audio story is just the story of captain john smith and you can search in youtube you will find the audio of pocahontas a romantic tale uh, and a very mythical tale you can say so then you will can communicate with this pocahontas story now powhatan who was the powhatan powhatan was a tribe in native america native american tribe so i have already told that it was not a virgin country it was already populated by native aboriginal people so when captain john smith came there there already it was filled or full uh, of the tribal people and among them there was one tribe that is named powhatan and he was taken captive by the powhatan man he was threatened to death and he was also they were just the um, chief ordered to kill captain john smith captain john smith tried to impress the chief by showing him the um, what to tell it that um, some instrument regarding their voyage that is called oh, compass they just uh, i just forget the name captain john smith showed them the camp, uh, compass and tried to impress that it is some they think oh my god it is some black magic and we must kill this white man otherwise uh, he will do some magic with us and for that uh, the chief order to kill captain john smith but captain john smith daughter puka hunters he pleaded with his father and not to kill him and he even shielded him with her head and arms and saved his life so it is a popular romantic story and the central myth of english colonization on america in america sister 9 just two years after the settlement the situation grew worse in bitterly cold weather with a limited stock of food staying alive was hard so no story of gold and pearl and costly treasure precious stones marketplace the real story is bitter cold weather Again, the summer was also very hot, and the scarcity of food. Ninety percent of the colonists died by the end of the year. Ninety percent of the colonists died, and dream of gold was frosted away by the reality of the winter. Their relationship with the native Powhatan was no longer amiable. So, what happened? Native people tried to help them. if they keep the relationship amiable but the relationship get bitter and they did not get any help from the native people so there was no help no reliable source of food even the situation became so worse that dead bodies and even boot leather were the food sources so you can imagine the situation 
and in this situation smith tried to come into negotiation and on good terms with the native american because without their help it was impossible for them to survive in that unknown new land smith took the policy work hard and get food but it was re- uh, not it was not so popular among his fellows because all who came with smith they have the dream vision they have come here not to work just to gather and dig up gold and become rich but when the situation proves wrong with them they cannot take it and even virginia company could not think so much could not think that they could not <coughs> for see the situation that smith was going to face and even they cannot understand they felt that it is the um, fault of smith that smith could not prove profitable for them so in 1709 he was replaced by virginia company and went back to england In 1614 he traveled to New England to gather information regarding the area and its climate but he was again checked by the company so smith's adventurous spirit and smith's indomitable trust for voyage and knowing the new land was just put into death by the company again and again after 1609 so he devoted his energy in writing about his projects in which he could not participate and explorer uh, as well as a colonist he is considered the first important american writer he not only helped in the foundation of jamestown in 1707 the first colony of america but also confirmed the truthful survey of the land through his autobiographical writing so his autobiographical writing are of great value because those writings are the truthful representation of early colonial america his first book a true relations of virginia had already appeared in 1608 followed by his other books a true relation sorry other books a true relation of virginia describes the colonial time and also the story of powhatan and pocahontas now the next book that he wrote after he goes back from jamestown but all these books are centered around this new land a description of new land a general history of virginia new england and summer island uh, summer isles the true travels adventures and observation of captain john smith in europe asia african america these are his significant works and smith published nine books between 1608 the first book and 1613 including his works on virginia and new england although most of his works were written in england because we know that in after 1609 he had to go back to his homeland england the booklets that he wrote in america are considered great pieces of colonial literature as the context of the books are america he was the first writer of colonial america the mayflower colonist in 1620 we know that in 1620 a group of puritan 100 to 101 they again sail for america they did not uh, take smith with them but they took smith's writing smith's maps his books his pamphlets they all helped them to understand the geography and geopolitical situation of the early colonial uh, america and they did not take him with them but they take uh, they took their his books his works are a reliable source for later colonist so captain john smith is very important name in colonial literature or sorry american literature and he is the first american significant american writer who has greater knowledge and greater observation about the earthly colonies that he founded new england he founded jamestown and later he visited new england so his pamphlets are the reliable source for earthly colonial history so in this respect people blame him that, uh, that he uh, his autobiographical works are much the flamboyancy of his own adventurous spirit about his 
own character or whatever he just showcases of his own self but it is not wholly true because even if he talk about himself most he also talk about the place the land the atmosphere the things he has to face the conflicts the native people so they are get great asset for the later colonialists who plan to settle there okay so today we finish with captain john smith and gradually we will talk about the other pamphleters like uh, bradford and hatchinson one by one okay thank you